today we're going to talk about cell transport. At the end of the lecture, you should be able to tell me about the passive forms of transport. Passive transport is essentially the movement of molecules on their own. Yeah, that's what it means. So only certain things can go through. But what are those things that can you go through? Yes, yeah, small. Yeah, small things go through. Now, can large things go through? Jessica? No. No, did the starch go through the bag, Marshall? No, what went through the bag? The bag. because it's small. Now, in addition to that, because the phospholipids have that polar end sticking on the outside, they have to be small and uncharged. small and uncharged. All right. Things like that that can go through are water, gases, iodine, etc., except actually not water because it's charged. Although, are you guys ready for the fun part? We have this whole thing we have to learn about called osmosis, which is a movement of water through the cell membrane, which for the longest time people thought just happened on its own, but now we know that it doesn't quite happen on its own, but we're still going to have to learn about it as if it happened on its own because you still get tested as if it was happening on its own. So, you're welcome. So you're teaching us about things that aren't exactly correct. Yeah. Uh, 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 I got confused. No water. While you're doing that, hit the next button. All right. So most poly polar molecules can't go through. Water can kind of go through, but we'll talk more about that later. Polar is another word for charged. Yep, hit it. All right, and the movement is based on the concentration gradient. It's going from where to where. We did this in the bell work, so it should be on the tip of your tongues. It goes from high concentration to low concentration. Very nice. Next. It'll go until equilibrium. Yeah, that's right. It goes until the whole concentration is evenly distributed everywhere. That's called equilibrium. Hey, guess what this is? Uh, there's actually there's a technical term for this type of background. It is called a gradient. It's called a gradient. That's called a gradient, like concentration gradient. So if you had, for example, here's a high concentration of white molecules, and here's a low concentration of white molecules. Guess where the white molecules are going to go? To the low concentration. To the low concentration. Let's see. There they are. What's that called again? The D word. The better D word. That's called diffusion. And then when that is all done, you will have this. See how the white is evenly distributed now? Now it's equilibrium. Oh, so when it just go back and forth, like high, low, high, low? Oh, you mean like if, if, they, if they all got up over here? Yeah. yeah. And then they go over here. Yeah. Okay. Now you guys ready for the best part? At equilibrium, true or false, the molecules are still moving. They're wrong. The molecules keep moving. In fact, a little white molecule here could end up over here. But it's equally likely that a white molecule from here would go over here, and since it's equally likely, we call it equilibrium. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes, no, maybe. Remember that whole absolute zero thing? The molecules are always in motion. They're always moving. They're always moving. You can't stop That'd be absolute zero, and we've never, ever, 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 ever been able to do that ever, no matter how hard we try. Yes? Absolute zero is possible. Um, not, we've never done it yet. You think you can do it? It's, 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 yeah. Probably, maybe. If we have better technology, that'd be really cool. Absolute zero. Technically, I think outer space is absolute zero, but there's also, like, no molecules because it's a vacuum, so there's no molecules to, yeah, anyway. Equilibrium, yeah, well, concentration is equal on both sides. That's called equilibrium. The movement still happens though. That's the important part. The movement is still happening. There's no net movement. Now that doesn't mean that we ban the nets. What's that mean? Isn't it kind of like a total? Exactly. Not just kind of like a total, it's exactly that. It's total. Net means total. Net, gross, total, all mean the same thing. So there's no total movement. For every molecule that moves this way, it's equally likely that a molecule moves this way. And so it stays in equilibrium, even though the molecules still can move. Great! Hey, look, here's an animation of that happening. It's better than the other one. You see how it starts out with more of it going over here and less of it coming back? But as a result, the total flow, you guys see what I'm saying here? The molecules, they can move, 
If they can cross this barrier, then they can cross a barrier. That's the deal. And you see as a result, even though more of them are moving this way, so we have a net movement over here, some of them can still move that way. And over time, eventually, you'll have equal movement back and forth with no net movement. Now let's say this purple molecule is some kind of solid. Let's say it's the solid purple. What would we call this type of diffusion? Dialysis. Right. It just moves right through the membrane as if it wasn't even there. So let's throw some terms at your faces. There's diffusion, which is, just click through these, which is moving molecules based on the concentration gradient across a membrane. When it's a solid, we call it dialysis. Yeah, keep going. When it's osmosis, that's the diffusion of water. Very good. So let's talk about cells in their environment. Cells are always floating in this water-based environment. Since they're using term two vocabulary, that's aqueous environment. That just sound better than watery environment, aqueous. So cells are always water, remember? It's a little baggy of water floating in water. Here's our aqueous environment. Boop, there it is, floating in an aqueous environment. All right, so as a result, you've always got this movement of molecules in and out of the cell via diffusion. All right, so we're both water in, water out, and so it's all about balancing those two solutions. We need those, both of those solutions to be in Equilibrium. Yeah, we need them both to be in equilibrium. Yeah. The blue solution that is the cytoplasm here, right, it's got is more than just water, right? There's stuff dissolved in it. And it's safe to assume that there could be different stuff that is floating in. Red for your blood, because that's what your cells are floating in. As a result, the cytoplasm of all your cells actually tends to be slightly negative, which is just kind of a little fun factoid. So the question is, where will the water move? Everywhere. Yeah, everywhere, in and out of the cell. You know, so that's osmosis. Now we've learned that osmosis actually happens through these small proteins called aquaporins, which is a channel just for water. But we'll just pretend like that's not a thing yet until, like, yeah. As a result, it's all about tonicity. So anytime we're comparing two solutions, say the blue solution compared to the red solution, there are three options, right? Because there's stuff dissolved in there. You could either have, let's say, let's say we focus on sugar. You could either have more sugar in the cell than in the red. You could have less sugar in the cell than in the red. Or it could be, yeah, it could be equal. It could be the same. So we have three words for describing those solutions compared to each other. One is isotonic. What's iso mean? Same. What's that? Same. Yeah, iso means the same. And so these would be when the two solutions are? The same. The same what? Equilibrium. No, it also equilibrium. The same what? What's that word that we use to describe how much like sugar is in here? Concentration. concentration. So when we have equal concentration, same concentration. When we have same concentration, that's isotonic. Now it's worth noting these two solutions then would be in equilibrium, but that's not equal. Do you guys see what I'm saying? There's two different words that mean two different things. Isotonic would be if there's, you know, concentration of five grams per liter sugar in here and five grams per liter sugar in there, then they're in equilibrium because they're both they're both isotonic, which means they're both the same. Sometimes it could be hypertonic. Use your science word skills. What's hyper mean? Above. Above. So, for example, if there's a crap ton more, yeah, go click. There's a crap ton more sugar in the bag than in the liquid. We would say that this solution here is hypertonic because there's more. Then, what do you think hypotonic is going to be? Rice. The uh, less concentration. Yeah, the lower concentration. Hit it. Which would mean if here you have blue and here you have red. And this one's hypertonic, guess what that one is? Hypotonic. So remember, it's comparative words. Usually, when we talk about these solutions, we're going to talk about the solution that the cell is in. Because not only are your cells like baggies, but your cells are a lot like gummy bears. Little squiggly things full of like a sugary solution. Now, obviously, the sugar in the bear is way higher than the sugar is in your cells, unless, you know, something terrible is happening to you. Anaphylaxis. Are you guys ready for this? You know how gummy bears get all gummy? How's that? Guess what kind of molecule they use? 
Like, like, this fucking jello. Look at it's, uh, not bone marrow. That'd be really cool. It's, it's the hooves. Mm -hmm. Bone marrow. Piggies. Piggy. Piggy hooves. But, 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 guess what that's made out of? What structural component? Baggies. No, not baggies. <laughs> <laughs> lipids! No, well, not phospholipids, but lipids! So not only is your cells like this, but your cells are like delicious little gummy bears, too. So gummy bears have a high-fat content? No, 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 not a high-fat content. High-sugar content. Which then your body's going to store as fat because that's way more energy than you need if you eat a bag of gummy bears. Well, because I forgot to record during 8th period, Here's what you just may have missed out on. We were talking about our three types of solutions, and we talked about what will happen in a hypotonic solution. So you have these molecules of, well, whatever this green stuff is here, and there's a higher concentration inside the cell because it's in a lower concentration solution, and that's a hypotonic solution. So if the green stuff can't go through the membrane, it wants to, but it can't. So we can't get down to a nice system of equilibrium. What will happen instead is the water will actually enter the cell. So the water will come into the cell because of osmotic pressure. So the force of the inequality between these two solutions actually causes water to be pulled in by osmotic pressure. It comes in to dilute the solution until both the solutions are isotonic to each other. And when both solutions are isotonic, the system can finally be in equilibrium. You can think of it as your cell as sort of a personification. They're not happy unless they're in equilibrium. And they're going to do whatever it takes to get there. So once we're in equilibrium, we have equal movement of water out of the cell and into the cell, and the cell is then happy. So if you put your cells in a hypertonic solution, which is what the salt water should have been, what will actually happen is because you've got this higher concentration of green molecules outside, and they want to go in, but they're blocked, so they can't. Instead, the osmotic pressure will build and actually pull the water out of the cell. The water gets pulled out of the cell by that osmotic pressure, and that's actually going to uh, move out here to try and reach isotonicity again so that the system can again be in equilibrium where you have equal movement. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. You're probably thinking, hey, wouldn't it be easier for the green substance to just diffuse through there to reach equilibrium? And the answer is yes, except it has to be able to do that. Diffusion is always the number one option to get a system to equilibrium, but if that can't happen, the cell's plan B would be to use osmosis. Here's a really good example that shows it to you with real cells. So you can see what happens if you put red blood cells in a hypertonic solution. The water gets pulled out of the cell, causes the cells to shrivel up, and you guessed it, they die when that happens. Same thing if you've got a hypotonic solution. You have all this water rushing into the cell, only the cells don't have anything to contain their membrane, and so they keep filling, keep filling, keep filling. And just like a water balloon that's gotten filled too full, they tend to pop, just like it's showing you right here. They pop, they explode, they lice, they die. So both of these solutions are bad. What it really wants to be is an isotonic solution where you're in equilibrium, equal movement in and out. Your cells are very happy in an isotonic solution. In fact, your kidneys work very, very hard to help maintain your blood plasma at an isotonic level compared to your cells. If you drink too much water, you're risking that your cells could explode. If you have too much pop and sugary energy, drink, energy drinks, you're actually pulling water out of the system and making your kidneys work harder, which is bad. Be nice to your kidneys. Here's a nice picture that actually shows you real cells and what will happen in an isotonic solution. Go down to a hypotonic solution, you can see the cells exploded. Here's some uh, cells that used to be there and now they're not there anymore. And I really love this image because you can really see these cells that just shrivel up and die when they lose water in a hypertonic solution. Now plant cells are a little bit different. 
they still don't like the hypertonic solution. Osmotic pressure builds, forces water to come out, and you can see it really just pulls the cell membrane away from the wall. It's really not good for it. While animal cells really like an isotonic solution, they, plant cells get really flaccid, they get limp and flopped over when they're in an isotonic solution. They actually need to be in a hypotonic solution. They need that osmotic pressure to keep pulling water in. And as water continues to enter the cell, they won't lice like our animal cells will because they've got that cell wall to contain the shape. What actually happens instead is the cell membrane pushes right up against the cell wall and actually causes the cell to become turgid. Turgid means it's like a fancy word for rigid or stiff. And so they need to be rigid. And when that happens in an entire plant, that's what actually makes the plant stand up straight. Right? We have a skeleton that keeps us upright. If the plants are not in a hypotonic solution, they'll flop over it. They need that turgidity in their cells. They need that pressure of the cell membrane being pushed against the cell wall. And that pressure is actually called turgid pressure. That's what makes plants stand up straight. So here's a very common application of that concept of osmosis. Let's say, for example, you have a U-shaped tube, we'll call it a U-tube. And you fill it evenly on both sides with water. In the middle of the U-tube, there's this membrane that you can see here. Here they've zoomed in on the membrane, and so you can see that there's these tiny gaps in the membrane. This little areas where small molecules, like the water, could fit through. The larger molecules, like the sugar, cannot. So they filled it up, it's really small, so the water can just maybe seep through one molecule at a time, but not a whole flow of it. The next day they come back, this is what the YouTube looks like. The original water level was right about here, and you can see that water has flowed over to fill this side and try and dilute the sugar solution over here on the right. You guys have a worksheet with this on the front and a cheat sheet reminder of what happens to animal cells in each of the three types of solutions. Answer the questions on the back for homework. If you missed class or you couldn't pick it up, links in the description. Thanks for watching, everybody. Enjoy your weekend.